So this is an intro level for uh, Vuex. It is, and I am Marta Bilia. I work in a nonprofit organization as a Rails developer. Unfortunately, I don't use Vue.js in my work, but I use it in a lot of my um, personal projects, which I love. Um, so what is Vuex? It is a state management library for Vue.js. <laughs> Um, th with the same name as Redux or Flux, I haven't played around with Flux yet, but it, it has the same principles, I would, I would say, that it serves a central store for all our states in our application. So, um, so when to use Vuex? Um, in my opinion, I would use Vuex as early as having three layers of components, because eventually we will keep adding features after features, and we would end up having a 15-layered component. So yeah, um, without Vuex, um, I would what what I do to manage my state is I put my my state inside of a data object inside of our parent component, the most parent component, and then pass it as props, right? And then if an, a a component would get triggered that would later change a state, I would have to emit an event to its parent, then that component would emit an event to its parent until it changes that state and then pass it as prop. So um, what Vuex does is eliminate that process and um, it eliminates that process into um, a much more uh, straightforward and predictable approach in managing our states. So. Um, uh, in order to master Vuex, we just have to remember and understand these five concepts, which is a state, a getter, a mutation, and actions, and modules. And this, are also, this is also a pattern that will work together to manage our state. So first is a state. Um, I will not explain how to install Vuex because um, I believe there's dozens of tutorials online that we could just view. And um, basically, how, how we set up our central store is we export a new instance of Vuex called a store conven for conventional reasons. And um, it takes in an object. Um, to, make an, to make a state is just a state colon and that object with a key and a value. The value can be anything as long as um, the application needs it. And to access a state is right in the child component view. It's called this dot dollar sign store dot state and the state name. Um, I wouldn't recommend um, accessing the state because there's a right way of doing it, which is getters. It is a function in your store that takes an object, the state object, and returns the value from it. So <laughs> to create a state is just by naming a function like that guy. And it takes in the state object as an argument and returning the value from it. So that is um, one of the examples. And in order to access that getter inside of your um, component, we will just have to put it inside of our um, computed object that is now a computed property, which would return this.store.getter and um, the, the property name of that getter that we want to to access. Um, and also, uh, we have a helper called map helpers. It takes in an, an array or an object so, um, we, so that we don't have to, it, its purpose is to map the getters. And um, we don't have to do the this dot uh, dollar sign store dot getters. And um, also, um, if we want to add additional computed properties, we can use this um, a spread, ES6 spread syntax that we could, you know, add, yeah, add additional um, computed properties. So, um, but the thing here is uh, we can only change the state from within the component. What if we want to change the state inside of our mutations? So uh, inside of our store, that JS, our central store, that is another core concept, which is the mutation. <laughs> what it does is um, uh, a component would commit a mutation, then that mutation would change the state. The change state would be grabbed by that getter, and that that child component would just access that getter, which is the change state. Um, 
in order um, making a mutation is just by naming a function that takes in the state a state as an argument it's, it can also take in the payload as an argument um, and the value of that function can be anything we wanted it to be as long as it can change the state inside of our store.js um, and triggering triggering the mutation is by typing this dot St uh, dollar sign store that commit with the property name inside of that parentheses property name of the mutation inside that parentheses um, we also have a map mutation um, I know that's a pretty long text there but it's one of the examples let's say um, when I click a button that has add number to state it would then trigger the mutation uh, that has the number of add five to state and that state object would get that value plus a five, and then the ch change state now, which is a 10, is being grabbed by that uh, getter, and then displayed on that component, the, s the same component. Um, but the thing with mutations is it can only accept synchronous, um, synchronous tasks because it is purposely designed that way so that we can easily track our, um, our mutated state, our, the state that we changed. So, for a synchronous task, um, uh, we can do actions. Uh, a synchronous task means that, um, like, fetching, fetching a request from our servers or uh, set timeout functions, those kind of tasks. Um, so this completes the pattern of our Vuex. <laughs> so a component would dispatch an action. The action would commit a, 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 a mutation. The mutation would then change that state. And that change state is being grabbed by that getter and that that component would access that change state by the getters, through the getters, I mean. Um, uh, action functions uh, takes in context as an argument. Context just gives us the access to commit, to the commit method, which triggers the mutation. So um, it can be made by like, and also it can take in payload as well. To make a mutation. So this is an example of how we trigger our actions in the commit uh, in the method object, which has a name, which has a property name of um, add number. Uh, this dot dollar sign store that dispatch with a property name of that action, and the comma is the payload that it takes in. So now um, this is the full, I guess, the full pattern of UX. So. Uh, uh, what it does here, I know it's another long text, but what it does here is that if I input a number inside of that input tag, it would just add to the current state, which is uh, 5, which has a value of 5. It does the full cycle of that full pattern of the view x. Um, so, so we also have a map getter that could map our actions inside of um, our our actions object so we can put it inside of our method objects uh, and I guess that finishes the view x pattern so um, I, I want to do a recap again which is um, action dispatches the component dispatches an action the action commits the mutation the mutation changes the state and the getters would get the change state and the components would access the change state by the getters. So um, the thing with storing all your uh, stuff inside of your store.js or index.js, whatever you want to name it, can get really crowded. So this, um, this Vuex property again is called, uh, another core concept is called uh, modules. Modularizing our central store is, uh, I believe, a, a whole new topic itself but um, I'm here to introduce it. So um, it is an object that contains its own Vuex properties, which is the getter, the, the state, the action, the mutation, and even itself modules. It's help, it helps us uh, divide, divide our store in our modules. So um, if I was to, to build an application that could post a blog with an authentication of a user, it'd be pretty weird if I put the blog task and the user stacks together. So we can, modules can help us separate those things. So um, how will we do that is by exporting an object 
by just naming it. And then in our, in our central store, we just import that object and then put it inside of the value of the modules. Um, also, we can even separate the functions inside of the, like for example, we want to separate the mutations only. So we can export all those functions and then import them inside of our module by having an alias called mutations. I mean, it can be named anything actually. Yeah, I believe um, it's a topic on its own self, but I'm just here to introduce that what it can do. Um, and lastly, I guess to, to fully master master of UX, we got to practice. And um, w um, I, I believe I didn't speak on the full grasp of how Vuex works. So it, it'd be better to like read also the docs <laughs> to, to grasp its full potential. And um, yeah, email me, email me any questions and um, stuff. Um, yeah, this is a free resource. Um, for for the things you can search of UX tutorials in YouTube, be many there. But yep, any questions? Is this the central store that like basically a global? How do you um, prevent uh, like naming collisions? If let's say oh yeah um both want to use Bubar as their and the state. How do you? Is there a transform? Is there a best practice? I think I think there's a uh, there's this thing called uh, namespace colon true. You could put it inside of your modules that would automatically uh, namespace your your uh, functions that has the same functions with other functions. So yeah. Do you know how like that works? Yeah. Um, I I don't know actually where to place that. I never build something that's that big enough. But from what I've read, and I might be wrong, but from what I've read is you could put it inside of um, the modules, just here inside of that object here. And yeah, uh, namespace colon true. Hey. Get a comma. Uh, do you have any suggestions on when to access things through the view store versus when to pass them through props? Is there any like, rule of thumb that you've come across that works really well? Oh, yeah. Um, like what I've said, um, if we have, like, <laughs> if we have, because we can also use, uh, if we have just like three layered components, right? We could also use like, this event bus to, to manage our state. But eventually, we will get ambitious with our applications, and we would add um, um, a lot of features inside of it, which would make a lot of components. So I mean, it's it's really like a three-layer component is my suggestion that you could start using Vue X. Yeah, just to, just to expand a little bit on that that bus question. Uh, sorry, oh, like, sure. Like, does it actually kind of compete with Vue X in a certain way, or do you um, coexist? Not really. I mean, you could. There are use cases that I've made that it coexisted, but I can't. Re it really does, I believe. But because, um, for example, if you got a lot of business logic in inside of your um, state, it would be a pretty, pretty hard to maintain if we we are just using event buses. So yeah, Vuex actually does the trick for those kind of um, use cases. Um. If the store data expired and I want the trigger to fetch the new data and store it back in the store, in that pattern, in the, in the pattern you just, you just show, show us, where will you do that? Um, if it's fetching from a server, then I would do that in actions. But uh, I believe that is also, uh, it's a part-time component also maybe you could use a lifecycle hook that could do those kind of things that dispatches that action. So it, you know, it expires, right? And it would update. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, for lifecycle hook for a component, then um, the actions for a synchronous task. Very cool, uh, round of applause.